This Hot Wheels Jet Sweep X5 was designed by Larry Wood and it was only produced in 1985 and 1986. This particular one came out in 1985 with the Spectra Flame paint that you see there. Uh, it's the only version that had the black tint window. As you can see, it has a metal body and a metal base. It's actually a two-part base. That interior, you see it has one post and then there's like a little hook that holds that jet engine part in. It's a real cool design. Uh, when I saw it, it makes me think fighter jet. <laughs> I, obviously the jet engine is why. Uh, this one was played with. You can tell the wheels are kind of bent and bodies kind of dinged up here and there. It's interesting the way the two parts of that uh, metal base hold that top half, that back rail, uh, are held in by that uh, section you see there in the back of the uh, base. It's kind of a cool way they fit this thing together. For this, uh, I'm getting rid of the Spectrifying paint, but I am putting red line wheels on it. <laughs> yeah, I know, I'm, I'm doing a few. Now that I've printed up some 3D bearings, now I'm doing some conversions of things to red lines because they make it uh, kind of easy. But uh, I found out that Hobby Lobby was having a really good sale on model, model Master Paint. And I know I've been planning on getting over to using an airbrush, but... I mean, the rattle cans were, <laughs> I mean, it was like a buck 75, something like that, a can. Um, so I couldn't resist. I got a bunch of different colors. I, one of the colors I got was a light sea gray, which is perfect for, you know, making this military aircraft. So that was the direction I went. I, I, <laughs> I couldn't resist. <laughs> um, there's the decals. I had this old set of decals. This is after I cut out the ones I used. Um, but yeah, from an F-105. So I thought, well, that'll work. I mean, they're old decals, which I have enough problems with, with fresh new decals <laughs> as it is. But, uh, you know, I've got these old decals. I want to use them. They, they actually looked like they were in pretty good shape. You know, you look at some old decals and the paper's cracked and you, know, you can spray coat clear over them, but you know, Lord knows how they're going to turn out. Sometimes you see them and they're yellowed. Um, this set actually looked manageable. So I thought I'd give it a whack. And worst case, if, if somehow I got them on there and the whole thing went to crap, oh, just drop it in the citrus strip again and start over. You can tell it's a it's a really boxy design to this. So I, I selected the decals I wanted to throw on. As I recall, that one is an armament panel. Uh, the one down the spine of the aircraft refers to uh, avoiding the jet intake. And, you know, that one there is just some little U.S. Air Force wording that uh, directions or instructions for being careful. But that, yeah, that was the decals part. And then I thought, well, let's get these wheels off of here. And uh, I hated those wheels that were on there. So I just pulled them out and, you know, cut them off, pull them out, ride. <laughs> but, uh, sorry, couldn't resist. Um, I screwed up when I was doing this. Uh, and you'll see... I ended up, I didn't grind out the area. I was keeping basically an axle about the same size. So I just drilled it a little bit larger. And this part went okay. And then after I did that, I took a break and uh, went out, rather than going straight to fitting the red lines on it at this point, I set it aside. And I'll explain what happened next <laughs> with those. <laughs> But, uh, you know, got out the flits, polished up. It's that weird soft plastic stuff again. You know, I, I wish that interior glass was a little bit better, but it is what it is. I polished it up as best as I could. And again, it was play-worn, but it not, not terribly so. 
But I knew that uh, there was something that could save this. That's right. Gauzy. <laughs> gauzy, gauzy, gauzy. Get that glass and uh, just dip it in the gauzy. It's going to put that uh, thick, hard gloss shell onto that. And all in all, I think you'll uh, see the results didn't turn out too badly on that. It's not perfect, but it's as close as I'm going to get it. <laughs> so yeah, the, all of this was going well. And, uh, you know, it, it's not a super fancy design to this thing. It was uh, obviously one of Larry Wood's off days. <laughs> it's not all that stylish or anything. Uh, but I, I like I still like the design and I wanted to mess around with it. So, you know, wicked off the excess gauzy on that uh, interior glass and uh, set that aside. And then the part that got kind of ugly was when I was doing the red lines, inevitably I, you notice the Band-Aid on my finger. <laughs> yeah, I shoved one of the axles straight into my finger. So that's the reason for the Band-Aid. Yeah, I was pushing on it too hard, and those axles are small. And if you think they look like needles, well, there's a reason why they look like needles, because they also act like needles at times. And man, that thing went straight into the tip of my finger. And so uh, that's why I do voiceovers, so you don't hear all the... Uh, nasty things I was screaming when that happened. And man, that thing kept bleeding. <laughs> so <laughs> that's the reason for the Band-Aid. But uh, hey, you know, five minutes later, you forget about it. No big deal. And hey, that tetanus shot I got probably 40 years ago is hopefully still good. <laughs> so there you see the red lines. And you know, I... I really like the looks of red lines on a lot of castings. Now, th this part here was the, the real fun of the build for me was that interior jet engine portion because it was exceptionally well detailed for something that they hide. And sure, it's a hinged body. So you lift it and you can see the engine, but they didn't even put a support in there for the top of the body. and and. As you'll see in some later shots that I did, I uh, used a toothpick to support that center section or the top section so you could see in it. Naturally, I wanted some kind of like afterburner going on the engine, so used Rise of Rust for that. And then I, uh, <laughs> I don't show the bottle, but just to get some red in there, I had uh, a Citadel in addition to this Rise of Rust had Citadel Blood of the Blood Gods for a little red, a dark red to mix into that. And then it was a Citadel Null Oil. To really, you can see all the detail on the engine. You, you can see that it's cast into it, but it doesn't appear all that well, just visually, until you start doing stuff like this. When you hit it with the Null Oil, it really brings out that detail. And as you can kind of see, I'm really putting the null oil on heavy and letting it fill. See how it's running in and filling those sections. Once that was done, I got out all the paint pins. And like, here's the Sharpie gold paint pin. And so I went over a lot of the detail that's there, the tubing, that kind of thing. With the gold, I go from the gold pin to a black paint pin. That's a Gundam, it's a fat tip Gundam paint marker. And there's these straps that are apparently on the fuel tank. That, that's because the casting does say JP fuel on it. And uh, then got out the red paint marker and just picked out a few things here and there. And again, I, what I really enjoy is picking out little details using different colors to just catch your eye. And I really like how it turned out. I did need to use the vise to hold this because it's just a fiddly little thing to try and hold. There's a Sharpie bronze pin. 
this is the perfect thing for the paint pens. And again, it's not like you're really laying down thick paint as much as, for lack of a better term, just accenting it with some color, if that makes any sense. But here you see, uh, you see the J2 fuel, excuse me, is what's cast into that vase. And so while it's not like it's a perfect paint job, it wouldn't be. And so you're just trying to kind of accent that detail. So there's what that bottom half just looks like when you're finished with it. I'd like to take a moment to thank my Patreon supporters. They're the ones who help uh, cover the cost of those paint pins. <laughs> and uh, I really do appreciate their support. And now it's time to throw it all back together. That rear fin and uh, glass slid in through that back opening. You see that back rail on the casting, the hinge for lack of a better way of putting it, that drops in between the, the bottom and top halves of that bottom section. I'll try and show that here. You see how you hook this in and now it's on the top half of that rail under the fin. And now this goes on the bottom half. There's a hook there right on the front that, oddly enough, that's an odd little thing to hook on that. But you get it on there and then you can just, uh, again, it has the one post, so now the screw just holds that all together. After I hit that with the light sea gray um, enamel paint, I did uh, go over this with a clear satin Minwax polyurethane. And again, this is all rattle can paints that I'm using. And uh, rolls like it's jet propelled. <laughs> so there's where we started. A little play worn, didn't quite sit right. The engine, you can see the bend in the axles is holding the front part up a little bit. But uh, I, I'm happy with taking this, the uh, jet fighter kind of look. And again, probably newer decals would have worked a little bit better, but you know, they might have adhered a little better, that kind of thing. Just, I think the age does take a toll on them. But at the same time, they held down, and then you get the clear coat on it, and, you know, you're fine. But there's the end result. I hope you like this build. Look at the afterburners kicked in. <laughs> I hope you enjoy this build. You know, I, I my builds go all kinds of directions. And uh, this is just a... Another one of those odd directions. There's the toothpick holding it up. <laughs> Thanks for watching these videos. Thanks for putting up with uh, the bizarre builds. You know, uh, not everything I build is Mustang. <laughs> and it won't be. I, I, if there's one thing that will be consistent with me is my inconsistency. I hope you all are having a wonderful weekend and uh, everybody stay safe and healthy out there. Thank you for watching these videos and all of your support. Catch you in the next one. Mm -hmm.